more on China's economy. My colleague Rochelle Kufo spoke to Yan Liang. She's professor of economics at Willamette University, and she starts off by giving her analysis of the latest data out of China. It's good to know that the Chinese economy is still expanding and recovering um, at a healthy pace. There are some concerns being raised about whether or not China's growth um, has peaked. And so now the second quarter, we're going to start to see slower growth and expansion. Um, but I think we should not over um, rate, overestimate this kinds of slowdown. I think there's some base effect. Um, if you think about last year, the first quarter, the Chinese economy contracted by 6.8%, and then the second quarter started to pick up and grew at 2.3%. Uh, so there's some fading away of those baseline effects, and that's why we show, uh, we see the numbers that the growth um, start to slow down a little bit. But most of the indicators still beat the expectation, except for the retail sales. So then let's break down some of that data. What, which parts of the data did you find the most encouraging, and which did you find the most concerning? Right. To me, I'm still pre I'm very happy to see that unemployment number has gone down from 5.3% back in March to now 5.1%, even though there's a slight decline in the average working hours. Um, but I'm still very happy to see that the unemployment figure is getting better because, you know, with uh, persistent and um, good job growth, that would be helpful for consumption demand. Um, and it's also great for the people. Um, what I think it's a little bit concerning is, of course, the retail sales that has grew by 17.7%, um, uh, which is slowed down from the March's 34% figure. And But that sort of, um, I think there's still some way to go to um, stabilize the pandemic control and encourage people um, to go out and spend again. Um, export numbers are great. Um, export had grew, you know, by um, 34%, uh, sorry, 32%. Um, which is better even than the surge in March. Now, a lot of people are wondering, in, in aggregate, you have a lot of this good data. Some of it failed to meet expectations. Why do you think that is? Is it that analysts just have very high hopes for China in terms of how they would also like to see their countries recover? Right. So there are a couple reasons for that, right? One is, of course, like I said, the base effect, uh, baseline effects. Um, so um, if we correct for some of those pandemic distortions, then we can get a much accurate um, expectations. Uh, the other thing, of course, is like you said, you know, um, the rest of the world is very optimistic about China's growth. But again, um, I think some of the experts on Chinese economy has pointed out that this kind of growth is still not a very at, not at a very solid ground, um, partly because, you know, the pandemic is still going on and especially acute in many countries like India. And on the other hand, there's still the geopolitical um, uncertainty between U.S. and China and the semiconductor shortages and the rising commodity prices. A lot of these factors are not under the strict control of China. So we have to take into account all these other um, factors as well. So then given some of the, the choppiness and some of the uncertainty, both domestically and internationally, how do you see Chinese policymakers perhaps adapting or, or tweaking their plan given their other longer term economic goals? Right. So some of the very conventional policies, of course, is trying not to hike the interest rate prematurely. Um, it looks like the government should continue with more expansionary or at least um, same kind of uh, expansionary policy. Um, it should continue to watch out for certain areas um, like, you know, automobiles, for example, production. Um, it has hard hit by the shortage of uh, semiconductors. So some specific support for the industry would be helpful. Um, and also job creations. Um, I'm a big advocate for, you know, job guarantee programs. Um, I think this is going to be great for the economy. And instead of giving people just hang out cash and su supplemental income, it will be very helpful to provide them with a meaningful job, steady income, and that would definitely help to boost the demand. And also at the same time, you know, uh, relieve some of the inflationary pressure. So I think um, there are a lot of things the government can still do, but the policy stance needs to remain vigilant. And one thing that we've seen a lot of economists worry about is whether this is going to be an even recovery for people coming out of this. What's your take on perhaps the role that, that China should, should take or something that policymakers should look at to really try and make this a more even and balanced recovery? Right. So I think... I think even recovery um, has two dimensions to it, right? One is at the global level that we see countries like China is forging ahead, but then there are other countries that are, you know, really uh, slowing down and really lag behind. So China definitely has a 
a big role to play, right? China is such an important global player. So by China's investment abroad, by China's imports, um, all of these could uh, help other countries to you know, get the demand boost.